It's Mark from Skywagon University. Do you remember the T34 Mentor we did the video on a few months back? IO550 powered Bonanza single uh, tandem seat. This is the passenger version. This is a 1965 C33 Debonair. So it's same wing, made by Beach of course, with the IO550 in it. So let's get a little closer to it and have a look around it and take it for a flight. So here we are with the plane. Uh, we're gonna have a look around it. Um, just a quick side note, when I was a kid in England watching Westerns in the United States, I always used to see the sun like this, a beautiful clear day, and wonder why the cowboys had sheepskins on if it was so sunny, because it was cold. Today is about 33 degrees right here today, centigrade, no, Fahrenheit, and like one degree centigrade. So if I'm cold, that's why. Anyway, so this plane, so the debonair production run went from uh, 60, to 72, they were, and, and by debonair, okay, let me just clarify that. A debonair or an F-33, the later version of them, have the normal tail. They're not the V tail of the Bonanza. So these weren't called Bonanzas. 60 through 68 were debonairs. 69s were E-33 Bonanzas. And then 70, 71, 72, they were bonanzas with normal tails. So this is actually a debonair. And some beach guru watching this can point out the subtle differences between this and, and subsequent planes. But basically debonairs and anything with the designation 33 is a normal tail, meaning a vertical fin, horizontal and elevators rather than a V. So <clears throat> I personally like these with the normal tail. And we'll talk about tails later because the V tails have got a lot of uh, financial issues with their rudivators. When this came out in 60, it had an IO470 in it, which is a 260 horse injected continental um, six cylinder, 260 horsepower. That was its normal engine. It was an IO470N. Uh, IO you can upgrade them like any of the big bore continentals from the 470 to a 520. That makes it pretty nice. That makes it like a, um, an F33, the later version of it. But this one has got an IO550. So 550 cubic inches, 30 cubic inches more than the upgrade of the 520. So it's 470, 520, 550. And it's a Beryl de Shannon STC. And Beryl de Shannon is a company that does a lot of modifications on uh, Beechcraft. We'll look at some other ones that this plane has on it soon. But that 550 in this plane makes this plane absolutely fantastic and if you've never been in one don't go in one because the moment you've been in it you'll never every other plane will have to try and match up to what this plane is like and i like moonies but this plane is 180 knots on 16 gallons an hour carrying four people and 74 gallons of gas it's 200 mile an hour cruise on 17 gallons an hour. And you think 17 gallons is a lot, but you're going so fast, it actually gets there so quickly that you've used about as much fuel as it would have taken to get 172 the same distance at half the speed. Twice the gas, twice the speed, same. So these are absolutely fantastic planes. And this plane's a 65, same age as me. It's 57 years old. So let's walk around it and have a look at some of its um, nuances. Let's start with the engine. So with my handy Leatherman, on these debonairs, they have these four over center screws on each side for the cam to uh, that uncam and open the cowling. The F33, which is the 73 and newer version of it, has a single handle. You just unlatch it, open it, and it goes up. It's a little bit more modern, but these are pretty simple. You just have to be careful that you don't scratch the paint. They all are a quarter turn. And this one's been upgraded from a slotted head to a Phillips head, which makes it even nicer. Once they're open, pop the hood, open the bonnet, however you want to say it, a little stay there to hold it open. So the first thing you notice is a giant IO550 engine. It's got steel continental cylinders on it with millennium valve covers on it. They're not the millennium cylinders on it because there was an AD on those and they had to be removed. So it's got um, the one of the speed mods that Beryl de Shannon makes is this um, it's like a sort of fairing under the engine, which when it's closed, seals it in. And it's just better for cooling. It's supposed to be some sort of speed mod. It's, it's just a nice upgrade to have, and that's got it on it. Gammy injectors for very precise fuel metering. 
just a really nice present. There's no bulges in the cowling. There's no, it's not, it's not bigger in its structure. It's just bigger because it has more cubic inches in it. So you don't have to, it, there's no like weirdness where it doesn't fit or anything. It fits perfectly in here, going from a 470 to a 520 to a 550. So this is um, a 1700-hour TBO. Some of them can be 2000-hour TBO, time before overhaul. It's uh, 300 horsepower at 2700 RPM. So for takeoff, 2700 RPM, we'll fly it. It's 300 horsepower. And then when it's at 2400 in cruise, it's uh, 285 horsepower at sea level. And obviously as you climb, it will diminish. Fuel injected, six cylinder, direct drive, um, a very nice application for this engine. And then one of the other, that's the Beryl de Shannon mod, as we just said. This windshield also, the Debonairs used to have a much more shorter sloped, thinner windshield. The Beryl de Shannon windshield that's on this plane as well, which the later planes have, is thicker and more aerodynamic too, and no strip up its center. And if you want to get a, a close up looking in, in, down inside here, there's just very conventional oil cooler at the back, um, fuel injection, three cylinders per side, 300 horsepower. So imagine 550 cubic inches, six cylinders. What's the math there? Six divided by 300. Massive cylinders. Uh, fuel tanks on Bonanzas, all of them. They go from here to the root, the forward of the spar line. This side holds 37 gallons, that side holds 37 gallons. Usable, so there's 37 a side in it, and they're bladders, they have a rubber bag in them. And you have to be careful because imagine if you open this, and if you were able to see it, there's fuel in it, so it's hard to see, so I'll describe it. But at the bottom of this hole, which is right there, is shorter than the length of the fueling nozzle. So some over-enthusiastic fueler that isn't paying attention could just jab the nozzle in, and you'd be looking at the numbers counting, and he's actually ripped the bottom of the bladder. So when you fill a bonanza up, you have to be very careful about the sharp nozzle of the fuel nozzle tearing the bladder bottom and actually it's designed in there there's ribs on it to make it thicker right here so always be careful and spray it at an angle and keep an eye on not oh, not damaging the bladder because you know changing a bladder in a bonanza is going to be in you know, a thousand for the bladder and a thousand to put it in per side and then the cap just goes on like that rotate close always surprised me with these very thick wing i mean this wing is is a foot thick and yet it's so fast. It's not like a really aerodynamic, pointy fronted plane like a Mooney, yet it's faster. I mean, there's a lot to be said for horsepower, but still, this is an incredibly strong wing. And this line on top of the wing, all the way down it that you can see between the forward and trailing edge skins, is the spar. So that's the actual spar of the plane. It's not a skin over it. So that's right there, and it's obviously as thick as the wing is. This little cover here, that you could lift up, hides the bolts that hold the wings on. Always check that those aren't full of water or corrosion because they'll hold water if their drain hole is uh, blocked. So if that's full of water, make sure it isn't, otherwise you're gonna be corroding right around your wing holding on bolts. The gear, beach, typical, nice struts, shock struts, double puck calipers on them. You can put barren wheels on a Bonanza it's just a bigger tire, bigger wheel, bigger brake. That's a mod that some of them have. Uh, the wingspan's 36 feet, very standard for a lot of GA planes, like you know, 182s, 206s. Um, gear mirrors, nice. You can see the wheel's gone up, another one on the other side. And then this little fence here is just to shield the glare of the strobe if it were flashing from the cockpit. If you're IFR, so you're not being glared out by your own strobe, so it's like a little fence on the wingtip. Control surfaces on Bonanzas. There's a lot of myth and legend about it. So on a debonair with a normal tail, aluminum, magnesium. The elevator is magnesium. On a V-tail, this similar surface would be obviously at 45 degrees on the back, no vertical fin. This magnesium is basically, it should be called unobtainium because for some reason, you can make these out of aluminum. You can replace them with magnesium. There's not a hassle about them. They cost the usual price that they should cost. If this was a V-tail, the elevator or rudder because it's at an angle, this piece 
is $15,000 used on the used market because no one's making them, no one can balance them, they can't be made of aluminum because they'll, they won't balance or something to do with the whole aerodynamics of the plane. They must be replaced with magnesium, and the only way to get them is used from some, you know, a plane that's been in a hangar or a tornado where the, where the rudder has survived. <clears throat> what confuses me about that, though, is in 1947, when Bonanzas were invented, somebody was building rudder out of magnesium and putting them on the planes, hundreds and hundreds of them, and we've been to the moon since, and apparently we can't make them today. So if anybody out there wants to make magnesium renovators there's a market for them because at the moment it's only used but these on debonairs are not having that problem they are magnesium and you can get them so a normal tail a fixed horizontal an elevator a trim tab both sides vertical fin conventional rudder you're damped so if i move this rudder see there's no push i'll be gentle nose wheels on the ground if you move that the yoke's moving and i'll show you that when we're in the cockpit it's all linked, ailerons, rudder, so that's why you can literally sit in a Bonanza with your feet on the floor and turn the yoke and it will do a coordinated turn because the, all the control surfaces are linked. Very, very um, well-built planes. There's an AD on the um, rudder attach points. It's just a minor inspection for cracks, but it's something that a Devonair has that a VTAIL doesn't have because a VTAIL doesn't have a rudder. But the fuselage on them is exactly the same, but the look of the normal tail for me um, is nicer on these planes and they don't wag. A Bonanza in flight will just sit there and do this and the fix is to put a tiny bit of pressure on one of the pedals and so it just crabs a tiny bit and it stops it wagging but I'd rather it not wag at all. Get one of these. On the subject of all the control surfaces being linked, watch this, aileron. I'm going to gently move the aileron, watch the rudder. That's pretty impressive. So it makes them very, very, very nice to fly. Baggage doors. The F-33s, the successor of this, the 73 to you know late, you know, now 90s planes with the 520s in them. The F-33A, the A is a 520. They have the big barren baggage door, so they're like this. This has the smaller baggage door. Bonanza's are notorious for having aft centers of gravity and everybody wants to know their centers of gravity. These planes are actually very difficult to badly load because there's nowhere to put anything. Well, I mean, badly. You've got, you, 270 pounds can go right in here, but that's it. That area right there. F-33s, is, you can have some with six seats. You have some with the, the extended baggage goes out to here. There's a hatch shelf up here. But these aren't as bad to badly load as some of the other planes with the larger baggage areas. But a larger baggage door does help with lighter luggage and a bit more room in the back. But a debonair has this small door and it just latches over center and click. Typical beach. So in the cockpit, <clears throat> very beach. Originally it would have been a bit more cluttered and obviously older radios in it. So this has been modernized from 60s to sort of 90s because it's King Digital. There's an ADSB um, in and out transponder in it, but no big color touchscreen GPS or anything, but very nice old school IFR. Engine analyzer, fuel flow, autopilot with altitude hold, digital tack. I mean, there's a lot of like, King Digital with a smaller GPS here, but the beachy stuff that's so nice about these very simple gear up gear down lights flaps up flaps down lights so you can just see what's going on bright um, gear switches here don't touch that on the ground yokes you can get these with um, single yoke double yokes because you would think how would i learn in it there's no yoke there so you could pull out a little latch on the back here and there's two positions so there's like my normal one i would be there if you want to do the low rider it can go there and if you want the co-pilot to fly, you can literally swing it right over. So they've got both settings too. But if you need two yokes, this comes off and screws right onto here, a separate bar and another yoke, and there's two of them like in a normal plane. But this system means it's kind of cluttered in the cockpit with you know the bar going right across in front of the radios and sometimes they'll even touch the knob. So. The gentleman that owns this plane is very tall and he wanted, you know, more room. The seats are far back and he had the yoke in this position. So if you need to train in one of these, you can get the double yoke. Now, on the floor, the rudder pedals on the right side have no brakes on them, similar to in a Mooney. And these are stowed at the moment. So if you're going to have somebody over there, you just push in this little lever 
and pull them up. Same on the other side, and now that would work as a rudder. But if you're not using it, push it away. And then while we're down there on the floor, see that DN it says, which is down? There's a mechanical visual aid for the nose gear uh, position. So when I put the gear up, that will scroll and show you it physically coming up mechanically and then look in both mirrors, you can check it's up and they've got a light to check it's up. A little bit of redundancy. Um, <clears throat> get this out of the way. <laughs> Imagine flying it like that. The usual gauges, fuel, fuel, oil, temp oil temperature, cylinder head temp, oil, pre you know, oil pressure, amps, meters, and the usual uh, instruments here. Master switches, master battery, ignition and start. That's a CO2 detector. So all bedanzas are like this. This is the way they are laying out. And they are very, very comfortable. If you want to know how comfortable a bedanza is, Get your sofa, get a flat screen TV, have somebody make an engine noise, and somebody else run past with scenery and sit in the sofa watching television. That's about what this is like to fly. So I'm, I'm up on the seats to get out of the way. I just want to show you this fuel selector. It's very simple. There's off, left tank, right tank. No both. And it's right there by your left heel. Very easily reachable. So emergency gear extension. It's obviously electric. If that didn't work on the dash, you'd be sitting in the pilot seat, you'd reach around here, take this little cover off, and there's a little handle here, and you just wind it. About 45 turns, and the gear comes down, and then you'd see an indication on the floor on the mechanical um, nose gear locked, and you feel this stop, and then your gear is down. And to stow it, it just sits like this, with a cover on it, and it's surprisingly easy to use. A nice um, redundancy backup. So we've had a bit of a look around. 65 debonair with 550 engine in it. Let's take it up and fly it around and see how she performs. Okay, so right now the uh, I turned on the avionics because I need the microphone to be live. But normally you'd start them with the avionics off. But so the microphone's live. We're just going to do it this one. So mags and master on. Mission on. I've r I recently ran it, so it's technically a little bit warm, so I'm going to treat it like a hot start. Mixture, throttle in, full, prop in, and full boost until I get a fuel flow reading. Stabilized, off, mixture out. When it starts, I, it's rich now, so I'm going to run it till it becomes leaner, 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 start. So I'm going to go mixture in, capture the fuel, throttle out, stop it revving, in theory. Clear. Bam, perfect. So you push in the mixture when it starts, so it's got fuel, and you pull out the throttle to stop it over revving because the throttle is at full. Okay, got oil pressure, got charge, got amps, got fuel. Okay. Look at that, I'm turning it on this little area here to go back up the other end. Look at the yoke. I'm not touching the yoke. Watch this. I come out of the turn. Everything is linked. That's why they fly so nicely. <clears throat> I'll shut the window because the wind noise. So if anybody's watching this for the first time wondering why I'm on a road, uh, this is the runway's up there, the road is below. It's an access road to some hangars that haven't been built and it's just a nice place to do the videos. So yes, I'm on a road, but it's not like a road anybody can actually come down and drive on. It's sort of inside the airport property. And obviously this is somebody else's plane, so I'm not going to go crazy in it. We're just going to take off, fly around, show you some numbers, um, just talk about it a little bit and see how nice they are when they're in the air. And then i got to get it back in my booty, which is nice. And burnt half the gas, but still, this is an excellent plane. And Bonanza's, a lot of them, I mean, I don't really normally like vernier throttles. The vernier throttles, when you have to turn it, turn it, turn it, you can press in the button and rev it, but the precision of moving the vernier, you wouldn't want that in a 185 or a tail dragger where you're going to be jockeying the throttle a little bit. But in this, with the way that it flies and lands and the way you can set the power, and it's perfect just to use the vernier. 
Wind was already stopped. Barely any brakes needed, you just press the pedal and it just turns. It's like driving a Cadillac. Or Jag, sorry, Cadillac, yeah, Jag. Okay, run up. The usual cigar. Controls, instruments, gas, attitude, run up. So controls. Elevator, ailerons, full and free. Attitude, <coughs> my attitude, blind attitude, neutral. Instruments, I did that backwards, so instruments, C-I-G-A-R, instruments, good, fuel sufficient, gas, we visually looked in the left tank, I am burning the left tank, <coughs> attitude, trim, and run up, so digital tack, run up, to. 1650. A mag check. Left, right, left. Both. You can see the mag I'm turning off is a light on here. Watch. So I turn off the mag. Bam. There it goes off. Turn the other one off. Bam. There it goes off. And then they're both off. They're both on. It is so smooth. And then a cycling of the prop. On a cold day, I'll do two, flash the oil through the hub. The second one. Okay. Let's go, we're on Plansville's frequency. Push the torque on the left. Trim's on the right, strange, because you trim the, you'd kind of want to trim with your left hand, but <coughs> the autopilot disconnects over here too, and the trim is here on the right. So. Plasmal traffic, Bonanza, 5871 Sierra, departing runway 23, be a local flight, Placerville. Check final. Smoothly apply full power. Up already. And climbing like a fool. Gear coming up. Gear in transit. Look in the mirror. Gear is up. We've got a gear up light. Now I've turned down the volume a little bit, so we're gonna just wind the throttle back to 24 inches on the manifold pressure. And then the RPM back from 2700 to 300 horsepower down to 2400. And the spectacular fuel flow is becoming acceptable. 24. I'm going to leave it a little bit rich because we're just in the path, but in cruise you'd need it back to like 16 an hour. And you can run it being a peak, just go gamma injector, so it can be even less than that if it's at altitude and set up nicely. We're just in the pattern. Then we're in the pattern climbing at 1,200 feet a minute. I don't know where I live. Look at that. Look at that. I didn't even work at it to get up here. 4,000 feet. Look at it. Orbital traffic. Beautifully coordinated. Yeah, three and a half. The field. And if I just press a little bit of right rudder, it will roll out on its own because it's all interconnected. Look at that. Still climbing at a thousand feet a minute. I'm going to trim it down a bit. And if we were going somewhere, we'd be on our way right now. I mean, this thing is moving. Twenty-four squared, so twenty-three seventy RPM, twenty-three fifty um, mouthful pressure. We're burning about twenty an hour currently because I'm rich. EGT is twelve hundred, cylinder head is three sixty-eight, which is perfect for just like local flight. If I carry on in this direction for another twenty minutes, I'm going to be in Nevada. 
Okay, so watch this, right. So feet on the floor, just lazy, sitting here like this. I go, oh, let's make a turn. Hotel traffic, but there's a 20 state delta downwind, a 28. Absolutely okay. fantastic. This has a probe issue on number three, so there's going to be that red light flashing. Don't worry about that. Placerville down there. We're doing 160. Yeah, I'm going we're at 5,000 feet, Patton altitude is 3,400 just an amazing way to move around very lazy way to move around too, I mean I'm sitting I'm sitting in a sofa here doing nearly 200 miles an hour just a nice little turn, I've initiated around onto upwind autopilot's not even on, I mean Okay, so let's get down a bit at an altitude. I mean, up, I'm not. I mean, I am on upwind now. There's the airport. I'll make a quick call. I'm descending to an altitude. Placerville, Step One Sierra is on a left upwind for left traffic. Two, three, four, stop Placerville. Backing off the power a little bit. We're way down, 15 inches. Still doing 200 miles an hour. But of course we're going down, I know that. I mean, but it is, you know. Hotel Tavern, Bonanza 206 Delta, turning base, runway 28, Hotel. Beautiful clear day up here in Placerville and fog in the entire Central Valley, look at it. And way out there, if you can see it, that's Mount Diablo, that's San Francisco, that's 90 miles away, the other side of the state. Looking clear for a turn, Placerville, uh, 7 Sierra is on the left crosswind for 2 3 at Placerville. I've got it at 15 inches, just top of the green. Bottom, sorry, bottom of the green. Normally I go around the pattern, it takes 10 minutes. I've been right around the entire airport at 5,000 feet. It's been like, what, four minutes? And it's smooth, big six cylinder with a three blade on it like this. 200 hours on this Hotel engine. Traffic, Bonanza, 2068 Delta, turn final. Somebody else enjoying a Bonanza. Placerville, uh, step one Sierra is on a left downwind, 2-3 at Placerville, a full stop. Okay, we're getting down towards Patton altitude. And I'm going to have the engines cooled sufficiently enough now for me to back it off a little bit more. Look at the Sierras, gear warning horn. So low airspeed, low mouthful pressure gear warning horn, but I can't really drop the gear until I'm doing 120, so here comes gear. I'm watching in the mirrors, there's the gear coming out, down there on the floor, down, a lock, and we've got a green light here, gear down. Now I'm in the flap arc, so I'm going to put down half the flaps, and trim. Now we're doing 90. Trim it so it's weightless. Prop in if we're ready for it. We're ready. Mixture a little bit richer than I had it. And now we're on the vernier. Just a little throttle, just gently screwing it in and out as I need it. Not big jockeying movements. Gear is down. Gump, gas, undercarriage, mixture, prop. We're ready to land. Placerville, seven once here is on left base. For two, three at Placerville. I can see my house. So we're doing 85 knots. If I can do it, I should probably say this after I've landed them before, but these, this plane, this gear on this plane makes it easy to land. They have a very, very good gear. It looks like I'm low, but I'm actually not that low. The camera angle is a wide angle. Placerville, then one Sierra, final 2-3 Placerville, full stop. And I'm just easing the throttle back. So 70, 85, down to 70. One more check to check the gears down, it is. Over the threshold, and then just ease it back. And just gently hold it off and let it just land on its own, watch. 
One, two, three, bam. Put up flaps. Rolling, no brakes yet. Neutralize the flaps. It might be cold outside, but it isn't cold in here. Let's put the AC on. Okay, so we had a look around it, we had a, um, a look inside it, we flew it around, we survived the landing. Um, this is Mark from Skywagon University. Uh, we do these videos are like a little sort of tour of different planes that we get in when we get them in. Um, we do them as often as we can and we're going to keep doing them. Um, thanks for watching it and if you like it, there's going to be a lot of other videos up and down here on this column here if you select Skywagon University. And also subscribe on the red tab down here and the little bell, if you click on that it'll notify you when we post another one. But if you enjoyed it, please subscribe and thanks for watching it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because this is probably one of the nicest planes that I've flown in one of these videos apart from my own.